Hello folks, this is Nitin welcoming you to the AI University channel where you can learn all your favorite digital technologies like machine learning, deep learning, AI, big data Hadoop, virtual reality and cloud computing. In this video, I'm going to show you, uh, explain and start writing the code related to simple linear regression. In the previous video, I showed how to develop the simple linear regression model using Python's scikit-learn package. But in this video and the subsequent videos, I'm going to show and implement the same algorithm using Spark ML Lib. Uh, and I'm going to use uh, Google Colab to train our simple linear regression model. So stay connected uh, till the end of this video and the series to acquire related knowledge in order to understand the best of, of both worlds. If you are new here, then consider subscribing to this channel. Or if you have already subscribed, then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications about hottest technologies of 21st century. So let me open my Google Colab uh, Jupyter Notebook uh, real quick to explain the code related to Spark MLlib uh, simple linear regression model. First, we need to execute uh, these uh, first two cells, okay, which are install all the dependencies in Google, Google Colab environment as well as setup environment variables, uh, which are actually pretty much required if we want to run PySpark on Google Colab. I have already created separate videos on how to enable PySpark on Google Colab. So you can watch the video link given in the i button above for the same. If in case you want to utilize your own Windows machine to train this algorithm using PySpark uh, on Jupyter Notebooks, then watch the video given in the i button above to see the steps to install PySpark on Windows machine and uh, running the related commands in Jupyter Notebook. In the next cell, we are uh, starting the Spark session, which is uh, this particular cell. Uh, you know, utilizing uh, the packages like Find Spark, okay, uh, and uh, Spark session, right, uh, which is being uh, imported from uh, PySpark.sql, right. So by default, PySpark is not on the sys dot path, uh, and hence, uh, in order to use it uh, as a regular library, we need to add a PySpark to sys dot path at runtime. And we can use package called find spark for that purpose. So that is the whole reason I'm using find spark. We also need to initialize it. Uh, uh, so I'm using this uh, find spark uh, dot init method. Next, I'm instantiating a spark session, which is the entry point to the spark. And uh, this is the statement I'm utilizing to instantiate the spark session. So it is, uh, you know, very first object you create while developing a Spark based uh, applications. We can create the Spark session using the Spark session uh, dot builder method and builder method gives you the access to basically uh, builder APIs that you can use to configure the session. And uh, by defining the master uh, as a local and in solid brackets star, you are actually instructing Spark to run locally uh, with as many worker threads as uh, logical cores on your machine. Get or create uh, here is useful in the cases where an application wants to share the Spark context. You can use it to share a Spark context object across applications, uh, but keep in mind that uh, you can share a Spark context only within a single JVM, thereby uh, helping you uh, share the broadcast variables among different applications. Don't feel intimidated by this uh, level of technicalities. Uh, this was just for your information if in case uh, somebody asks a question in interview. Moving on, I'm uh, utilizing this file upload a widget in the next uh, cell, okay, uh, which is provided by Google Colab so that we can upload uh, students underscore grades underscore data dot CSV file from our local uh, Windows Drive uh, folder to uh, Google Colab remote location on uh, cloud. Okay, so this was our file students underscore gates dot uh, underscore data dot CSV which we wanted to uh, basically upload 
here okay so in order to enable this widget uh, we first need to import class uh, from google dot collab uh, package called uh, uh, files so this is the class uh, class called files which we are importing from google dot collab all right and then i'm calling uh, upload method uh, to enable the upload option when i ran the cell uh, i got a upload button uh, saying choose file okay as you can see here so it says choose files now uh, we can just click on it and it will open a window on our machine from where we can choose the file to upload on google collab so we can then select this particular file uh, available on our machine to upload it on google collab once the processing is done you will see a message like shown on the screen which is this one saving students underscore uh, grades dot underscore data dot csv2 here and uh, the last modified information etc okay so in the next cell i'm just uh, loading this students underscore grades underscore data dot csv file uh, which we uploaded in the previous uh, step uh, you know and I'm actually loading this file using this method called spark.read.csv right uh, passing the name of the file as parameter here okay as well as uh, keeping the header parameter as true okay to basically display header or columns of the data set I'm also setting uh, the infer schema parameter here as true so that infer schema will automatically guess the data type of each field or attribute or column of our data set. When we set the value of infer schema as true then the API will read some uh, you know sample records from the file to infer the schema. If we want to set this value to false then uh, we must need to specify a schema explicitly. In the next cell, I'm just uh, basically printing the schema uh, here, right? To uh, take a look at what data types infer schema equals to true has uh, set for our data set attributes or columns. So when I ran the cell, uh, you can see that uh, the time to study uh, attribute uh, has a data type uh, defined as integer and grades has a data type as double. And in the next cell, I'm just uh, displaying the first few rows of our data set here. Okay. As you can see, we have time to study column and grades column. Now in the next cell, I'm creating the feature array uh, of our features uh, or independent variables by omitting the last column called grades, which happen to be the label column or dependent variable of our data set. If you remember from previous video, in order to build these Spark MLlib based models, you need to format uh, your data in such a way that it should have only two columns, namely features and labels, in case the algorithm is supervised in nature. If the algorithm is unsupervised, then uh, feature column will suffice. So let's say you have a data set which contains hundreds of columns or independent variables then you need to condense or consolidate all these independent variable columns into a single column such that each row of that column will contain an array of all those independent variable entries. Since we are building a simple linear regression model, so we will see only a value related to time to study column that is a single column. Had it been a multiple linear regression problem you could have seen uh, all the independent variable values combined in one list in a nutshell vector assembler is a you know a transformer that assembles all the features into one vector from multiple columns that contain type double okay uh, we could have uh, you know used in uh, string indexer if in uh, case any of our column contains a string values to convert it into numerical values. So in the next line, I'm importing a vector assembler here, okay, uh, which is a, a you know a vector assembler transformer class, uh, and I'm importing it from pyspark.ml.feature package, okay. 
in the subsequent line i am creating an object of a vector assembler transformer class here okay in order to create a feature array please note that i have already omitted uh, last column called grades uh, by making use of this particular statement right data dot column and then i'm uh, getting rid of the last column by providing the index value as minus one here so in the next cell i'm creating an additional column uh, called features uh, using vector assembler object created above right so i'm storing uh, this particular feature column in a uh, data frame called data with features okay in the next cell i am uh, just displaying the content of uh, data with features uh, data set using dot show function right uh, and you could see that additional column called features uh, is added here storing the value of time to study in a array form okay or in a vector form here so folks this is it for this video to conclude i showed uh, how to uh, upload the data from local system to google collab uh, cloud platform how to read the csv file as well as how to create the feature array so let me ask you a question from today's video what does master uh, local and in solid brackets star signify in the command uh, spark equals to spark session dot builder dot master uh, local and in solid bracket starts dot get or create please post your comments and answers in the comment section given below so that i can get a chance to incorporate your feedback you can also post your technical questions in the comment section and i will try to answer the same if you are watching this video and you are not already a subscriber to our channel consider clicking that little subscribe button in case you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications whenever I will release a new video. So thanks for hanging out with me guys. I will be covering next topic in the upcoming video. So keep on watching. Thank you.